God works for good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. So think about that. No matter what happens, good, bad, ugly, whatever happens in our circumstances in life, in all things, God will work out for good for those who love him, for those who, who want to make God's purpose their purpose in life. God will get us through no matter what bad things might happen or good things. And he will cause all of those things to work out for the good. And that is a good news for us. God wants us to find that silver lining. He does not promise smooth sailing in life. But, but this is what does, God does promise to us. Through it all, God is going to give us wisdom. He's going to give us inner strength. God is going to give us inner determination to ride out these rough waves of life, to roll with the punches of life. And in the process, going through all of that, we become spiritually empowered people. Now, when I, I think about this powerful spiritual truth, it is demonstrated quite profoundly in Scripture many times in this morning, I want to share how it is demonstrated in the psalm, Psalm 66. Listen to the words again in the psalms. For you, God, test us. You refine us like silver. In other words, God brings us through these tests in life where we are refined and we are changed in the, in the very depths of our being. You brought us into prison. You laid burdens on our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us to a place of abundance. And I love the way the psalmist describes all the difficulties and tribulations that he and his people had to go through. Uh, God uh, allowed them to suffer at times, to place burdens on their backs. Uh, they went through fire. They went through water. They had all kinds of difficulties. But through it all, God was with them. And step by step, God led them to a place of abundance. And here is the ironic truth about this abundance the Scripture is talking about here. The abundance God pours into our lives is not always material things. And usually it is not material things. The abundance that God pours into our lives is the work that He does inside of us as we go through the troubles that we face in life. The abundance is how He shapes us and places within us inner strength, shapes us into compassionate people, gives us patience, helps us to become determined. The abundance is the actual shaping of our characters and attitudes into the image of Jesus Christ. The abundance is spiritual growth and maturity. And that is important to other, uh, understand. A new car might, uh, might be uh, wonderful to have, but a new outlook and a new perspective in life uh, filled with an inner strength and a hope and a purpose is better than a new car. Spending a week at the beach, spending a week in, in, on a lavish uh, vacation might be fun, but experiencing the joy of a closer walk with God and being guided in that walk is much, much better. A beautiful house uh, that's maintenance free, might be uh, highly sought after. But having your feet firmly planted on the foundation of, of, of faith with God through Jesus Christ is much better because when that happens, it happens on the inside and that cannot be taken away from you. The abundance God wants to give us helps us to become the empowered people God wants us to be. Now, there is a popular actor 
by the name of Chris Pratt, you've probably heard of him. He's famous for the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. Recently, he was asked by a reporter, doesn't it bother you that all of these people are trying to cancel you and trying to cancel your career because of your faith in Jesus Christ? This is how Chris Pratt responded. I sure do. In other words, he's saying, I sure do face a lot of criticism because of my faith. But that's nothing new. If I was of this world, they would love me. But I've chosen to be out of this world. So Chris Pratt has chosen to be a follower of the Lord Jesus, who was also rejected by the world. His inner being, his soul, it isn't shaped by the opinions of people who are outside of this life who are criticizing him. His, his very inner being is being shaped and guided and transformed by this dynamic relationship he has with the Lord. The possibility of this dynamic relationship with Jesus is the silver lining that Jesus expressed to his disciples as he faced the cross, as he faced death, as he knew his time on this world was limited. That was the silver lining that he wanted to share with the disciples that would turn this world upside down. Listen to what he says again. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. He's talking about the Holy Spirit here. He said, the world cannot accept him, but it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. So Jesus said, to his disciples, I am not going to leave you as orphans. I am going to come to you. This is the silver lining. While Jesus walked this earth, the Holy Spirit dwelled in him and powerfully worked through him, enabled him to teach, enabled him to encourage, to help people, to heal people, and he did all this with, within his reach. However, once he went to the cross and, and, and he, he died, the sacrifice for our sins, was raised up and, and then ascended to the right hand of, of God, the spirit of Christ was no longer limited. At the right hand of God, in, in the spiritual realm of heaven, that spirit now could be unleashed to those who believe and to those who receive. So from that difficult news of Jesus suffering and death comes the silver lining of resurrection and forgiveness and grace and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit of Christ who shapes us during the difficult times of life and prepares us for God's abundance of inner strength and determination and joy and purpose and patience and endurance. God gives all of that to us. And all of these inner things transforms us into spiritually stronger people who can bring forth that abundance and God's presence into the lives of the people around us. So, through our lives, God releases the Spirit's power. And our friends, our neighbors, our families are blessed through us. The world can see that silver lining. Amen. Let's turn to our final hymn. That would be hymn number one. Joyful, joyful, be adored.
Lord, make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.